Welcome to Mastering Merch Design. My name is Charlie Pangus with Merch Design Academy, and this is our very first video on this channel since I converted it from Charlie Pangus to Merch Design Academy. To celebrate Christmas early, I'm taking stills from a movie called Violent Night. It just released in theaters. I watched it with my family. We all really loved it. So what better way to celebrate the holidays than to show you how to make this design. Open up Photoshop and let's begin. I started off with text and if you look in the bottom left corner of your screen, you'll see the shortcut T that accesses your type tool, allows you to type out anything you want, and then you can use the character panel to do things like change text size, character spacing, all that fun stuff. And you can't abuse the fonts, guys. You have to find the right font for the job, and I felt that this one fit the job perfectly. Bonus tip, if you wanna adjust the letter spacing in between each character, all you have to do is hold an option or alt on a PC with the left and right arrow keys to nudge it over. It's really cool, try it out. Now you can press Command or Control T to transform your text, right click, then select Warp. Selecting Warp will bring up another menu on the very top with a plethora of Warp options. Go through them, have fun with them. I use Flag for this example. After warping, I did use a third-party plugin from Exposure Software called iCandy to add those drips that you see. I go over this a lot in my one-on-one -on -one lessons, and in all honesty, you don't really need the plugin to do this effect, but it definitely makes it easier. Now it's time to place my main image. I just dragged it from my desktop into Photoshop. The image was extremely boxy, just a rectangle as you can see, so I did have to add a layer mask and paint around the edges with a soft round brush. You do have to be careful doing this though because if you are DTG printing it, DTG really doesn't like working with pixels that are less than 100%, so be very careful, but I'm using a bitmap halftone pattern for this image to process it, so you'll see that in a second, but it does make the print process so much better, and uh, I rarely ever mask without adding some sort of halftone pattern or something to my edges. I knew I needed something on the right side. I don't know why when I was looking at it, it just looked plain, so I added some rectangles. I figured I can put some other stills from the movie inside of these boxes, using clipping masks. Some of you might notice that I'm constantly resizing, moving things around. That's just because my brain is just working in overtime, right? So I'm constantly just like doing whatever I'm thinking. If you're new to designing in Photoshop, I definitely recommend you learn your shortcuts because when you learn your keyboard shortcuts, it just allows you to work fluidly without overthinking every little step that you take. I'm importing the rest of my photos now so I can add them as clipping masks to my rectangles that are in my layers palette. It's pretty simple. You can clip any layer to another layer just by holding an option or alt on your keyboard, hovering in between both layers and then just left clicking. And I'm doing this for each image in order to make sure that they are clipped. And after that, it's pretty much about adding these effects to bring the entire design together and some other text elements as well, because um, the bottom was a little bare, of course. That sounded bad, didn't it? But you guys get what I'm saying. I took my original rectangles and I duplicated them, added a displacement map to them using just a texture I found online. And then what that did is it just made like the edges look a little rougher. I didn't like how clean they looked. And then I added a simple color overlay layer style to them so I can pop them out a little bit with red. And I really liked the way this looked and I just moved them around a little bit so they don't look so repetitive. This next part deserves its own video. I applied a bitmap effect to David Harbour's Santa to give it more of that halftone pattern look. And this is a lot to explain in one video. So what I wanna do is make a dedicated video on it because I feel like you guys deserve that. So if you guys really want that, let me know in the comment section below. I'll just go over it real quick though, just so you guys kind of understand what I'm doing. So I created a document that's the same exact dimensions as my current document that I'm designing in right now. It's 15 inches by 18 inches at 300 resolution. I then used a level adjustment layer to separate the tones more so I can actually add that effect to each tone. So I have mid-tones, 
uh, what no actually shadows midtones highlights and then I have a even brighter layer to add a little bit more details to the highlights and that's pretty much it. Then I copied each tone to the new document and then added something called a bitmap mode effect which is found under image mode and then you have to go grayscale first and then you can go into bitmap and that's pretty much the process and you just repeat for each tone. For the smaller images I didn't do the same process though I just used the filter gallery to give them that same sort of effect. I probably should have applied the same effect to them. I think I got a little lazy right there, to be honest with you guys. But uh, they ended up looking pretty cool. Um, what I didn't like, though, is the color on them. So I ended up making them black and white and just manually painting in color because Santa Claus has obviously that iconic red. So I just basically painted that red back in with a multiply on my layer. And as you can see, it just like kind of blends in perfectly. It's really cool. And um, we can also dive into that deeper. I mean, there's so many options on this channel, guys. We're going to learn a lot. So if you guys want to know anything, please let me know. For the top text, I didn't like how flat it looked. So I ended up adding a bevel and like emboss sort of effect to give it more of like that sharp edge look. And then I applied the same exact filter gallery effect that I applied on the Santa Claus uh, images. And that's pretty much it. And it ended up really looking cool. And it was a matter of just like kind of recoloring things, of course, so things look like they belonged. We'll go into that effect a lot more too. That deserves its own video. I feel like I want to save some of this stuff for other videos because I'm, you know, we, we're going to learn a lot. So each episode, we're going to try to touch on all these different things. But uh, yeah, that was really, really, really fun to do. So let me know what you guys think about that effect if you want to learn that or not. But uh, I use it all the time, honestly. If you, if you pay attention to my work on Instagram especially, you'll see me do that all the time. After all is said and done, this is the final design, and that was only episode one too, and we covered so much, but we have so much more to cover in the episodes to follow this one, and it's going to depend on you guys and the support that you want to give this channel. So if you guys want to see more, please make some noise in the comment section below and smash that like button so I know that you guys enjoyed it. And that's it for this one, but don't worry, we'll be back next time.